Hi guys, this information is for uh, beginners carving. It's gonna give you some information on sharpening some tools, some uh, simple techniques, and also what to look out for, for tools that are getting blunt and dull and maybe chipped. Uh, also, I just wanted to show you a few uh, techniques that I've picked up along the way that will allow you to carve more efficiently, but also more safely. So generally when tools arrive brand new, they have a coating of varnish on them. And this is to protect them from rust in transit. And sometimes it looks like it's a, it's a dull knife because of that, that varnish, but soon quickly after you, if you strop it or you can take off that varnish, with some acetone, you can very quickly see that it is ready to go out of the box. However, after a bit of use, you know, you're gonna have to do some maintenance. So the first thing I wanted to show you is what to look for for some dull knives or some dull tools and also some chips. So if I just take a few cuts with this chisel, and I know this, this chisel is chipped, it's quite difficult to push through the timber and it's leaving some fibers sticking up and I can see some lines. So you can definitely see on, from the material that it is actually uh, damaged. The next one, I know this knife is actually quite dull. I've been using it quite extensively. And you can see that there's a little bit of light just on the edge there. And you can see that there's a few little chips along this, this round part here. So let's choose a bit of fresh timber here. So I know this part of the knife is quite sharp still and you can see that it's very glossy really nice finish doesn't make much sound when cutting but when I get to the tip it's very hard to push through the timber and I can start to see some lines so you can see how it's lifting here lifting the material it's not a polished cut so if I did it on a sharp part of the knife, you can see it's a lot more polished here compared to the cut I just took. Okay, so now I've set up a few different techniques for sharpening these tools, because I'm sure a lot of you have some water stones already. Uh, you've probably got some slip stones already. Um, and if not, we've got um, a couple of you know techniques and, and products that could be used. So the first one I want to show you is this little slip stone. It's actually a 300 grit stone and it's a drill stone. You can use water or oil on it, but once you use oil, you should just stick with oil because it's hard to get the oil out. So just for the knife, for example, Need a little bit of water. And simply because this bevel, this has one single bevel along the knife, so it doesn't have a micro bevel on this knife, you can literally feel that bevel. And run it along this edge. So that's one way. The other way is to do the opposite. So you're holding the stone in your hand and you can feel that bevel and you can rub that stone over the knife. And because this is rounded, this blade here, this, um, to, to get the knife to sit flat against it, you just have to lift it up as you're bringing it towards you. And that will follow the curve 
what I like to do now, and that's with um, with a lot of different stones, is that you can wipe the slurry off the stone on a bit of timber, and you can use this slurry now, which is a mixture of the stone particles and also the metal filings, and you can use it to just do a final part of the strop of your knife, and this will be a quite a bit finer than the actual stone itself. So you can see very quickly that we're getting a polish there. Next, I wanna show you with the same stone, how to sharpen a curved tool. The idea is to run it long ways in parallel and and roll that chisel so you want to reference that bevel and you're just rolling it back and forth if you find this too hard you could just get a piece of timber as a reference find your bevel again and keep going until you've got a nice even finish. And if you've got chips on the edge, you can just keep going until you've got a burr on this surface. Okay, so, so once we've polished the, the bevel on a gouge, we just need to take off or polish that, that burr. So you never really need to do any heavy grinding the in, on the inside of any gouge because it is a polished surface. It should be a polished surface. And you're taking the material away. You're taking the material down into the polished surface. You're never taking, you're never polishing this edge down into the bevel. So a uh, very easy way to do that is just to shape a piece of softwood, a bit of a curve. Again, take some sort of material, uh, some stropping material, take some slurry from your water stone and polish that inside. And this will just take that burr off and keep that edge really nicely polished. If you've got a water stone, you can use, this is a thousand grit. So this one was the one that we had quite a few chips on. So, cause this has got a perfectly flat base a flat underside. I want to just sharpen this one first. So I've just flattened the back of this chisel now. I can feel the burr on the back on the bevel edge. So now I'm going to do the bevel edge. Again, you just want to rock it until you feel that you've ref referenced it flat. And then back and forth, trying to keep it square and parallel. And you can move it every time you move it, you can reference again if it's flat against the stone and the bevel. You can see that there is a good amount of steel coming off there. And you can see very clearly that We've picked up the front edge there, and this has got a little bit of a hollow grind here, so I'm not gonna worry about that because we're just focusing on the edge. And I can feel there's a little bit of burr. So now that that's done, I always like to use a bit of the slurry from the stone. You can just wipe it off. Again, that's just a mix of uh, 
particles from the steel and the slurry. And we can just use this to do our final polish. You can see we get a really nice polish from that. And then, because this is a nice soft bit of timber, you can just push down a little bit. And run it tool over the, the timber, or you can push the paddle over the tool. Whichever you feel is easy, easier. And then you can just keep this and you can use that to strop your tool in between jobs, in between cuts. And it'll, that'll keep it not, uh, razor sharp and cutting really well and prevent it from going dull. A dull tool will damage more easily because you're gonna to have to push harder through the timber and you, um, you're just gonna get a much rougher result. So I'll show you now, after we've sharpened that, difference in result. See, it's leaving a beautiful polished finish, whereas this is our the result from our previous, before the sharpening. Shouldn't leave any lines, should leave a nice polished cut. Just gonna show you some techniques on how to sharpen the curved carving knife. So I'm gonna reference the bevel. This is a single bevel knife. So don't have to worry about the micro bevel here. And then to get the curve on the front, you just wanna lift it up as you're dragging it back and forth. So you can see I've got a nice matte finish the whole way along the blade. So it'd be pretty comfortable that the stone has been in contact with all of the, that bevel. To finish it off, just going to take some slurry again from the stone. Again, this is a, a thousand grit slurry. And you want to use a nice planed piece of timber and like a freshly planed piece of timber. And that will avoid any grit being stuck in the timber from lying around the workshop or if it's been in contact with abrasives. If you had sanded this bit of timber, especially with a new bit of abrasives, the uh, abrasive can come off the sandpaper and get stuck in here. And then when you're trying to get a really nice polish, you'll you can rip out some, um, some big grain, or you can get some big scratches from that abrasive, those particles being stuck in the timber. So now I just want to use this to finish off the knife. And you can see I'm picking up a lot more steel, it's getting darker. So you could run the blade over the strop or you can run the strop over the blade. Do some test cuts on this. And we wanna see a nice polished finish, no lines, no timber lifting. I'll show you on this bit of myrtle, which is a lot harder, a lot more dense than the hue and pine. And a sharp knife, or a sharp tool on myrtle will give you a really beautiful polish. So I've given you some techniques to use a slipstone, a waterstone, and lastly, you could just buy some metal polish. You can use this kind of metal polish as a stropping compound as well. And this works really well. Uh, again, if you don't have a water stone, you just want to do some real fine kind of 
uh, polishing on your tools. So I hope those simple techniques can um, get you some really sharp edges and um, maintain some, some great tools and bring back some, um, some dull tools.